Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment unfiltered with Pastor David. Well, Pastor, we're sitting in this freshly, fresh chapel. Yeah. And, uh, you know, last night we had service here. And the worship and everything about last night was just amazing. And and uh, and that's what I want to speak a little bit about. Last night you, you opened up our Wednesday night spiritual warfare. Mm. And I love what you said about how sometimes we can think spiritual warfare is this demon or this big lion and it's this big battle, when in fact, spiritual warfare are the little frustrating things that we go through every day. Yeah, very often what spiritual warfare, we don't even recognize it for what it is. And we have to be careful. Not every single thing that we encounter in life is necessarily spiritual warfare there's so very very many dimensions in various things obviously that we experience that um, aren't necessarily demonic you know attempts to destroy us i have to be careful with that hopefully as we go through the uh, series together i'll make that clear there are things i can do by the flesh in the flesh that just reap the uh, repercussions that didn't even require a demon of any sort or Satan strategies. You know, I'm just being fleshly. But often, they are the things that uh, we don't even realize are, um, are, are strategies that the enemy is using. We don't realize that because we fail to remember that um, as long as we've been alive, uh, there, has, there has been an observation of our lives. There are multiple billions of, of demonic spirits. We don't know how many, of course, but, you know, God created a host, and a third of that host uh, fell with Satan, and that host that he had created is, is certainly more than the population on the face of the earth. And so we, we know that, that there are demonic entities. We're going through Ephesians 6, and, and Paul speaks of the the wiles of the devil, the, the strategies, devices that he has, plans that are evil, and all of that. So, so we spoke about that last night. And I was trying to mention that we need to be aware that it's not always a demonized person that we're encountering or something that is blatant. But in fact, very often what it is, is the small things that seem to add up that are once they have their effect on us well they undermine our faith or they steal our joy and uh, remove our hope those are things that we have in christ we we have love because of jesus and we have faith because of jesus we have hope because of jesus and so the thief comes to steal and to kill to destroy the enemy has been scrutinizing humanity from the beginning and uh, usually brings the same kinds of tactics in one form or another. But as he observes through his minions, he, uh, he learns your weaknesses and, and he's aware of your strengths. Now, how do we know that? Well, in the book of Job, it's, it's made, very clearly, uh, made very clear there that... Um, when the uh, angelic hosts, including Satan, came to, uh, to assemble before God, God spoke to him and asked him, where have you been? And in the way he's speaking, it's as a interrogation. Declare to me, uh, give to me uh, a rendition of the things you've been up to. And, and there's an inference there. I know you're up to no good, so you need to say what you've been doing. Well, I've been going to and fro throughout the earth, he says. And have you considered? Have you weighed Job? I know you've seen him. Have you set your affection and attention on Job? And immediately Satan says, of course, you know. But you put a hedge about him, and that's where the whole battle in the book of Job ensues. The thing I'm pointing to is the fact that I was, he was very aware of Job. And, and Satan is very aware of those who belong to the Lord. He's aware that we're Christians. He's aware that we want to serve God, bring honor and glory to him. He's aware of that. So what does he do? He does what he can through his imps, if you will, to undermine and to steal, to 
to make us or try to render us useless in the, in the battle and uh, to have his way. So if he can cripple a soldier, if he can take you out of the battle, then uh, he has a form of victory in all of that. And so it's not always uh, encountering a demonized man. It's not always some very uh, obvious um, spiritual thing where you just know. It's, it's normally subtle. It's more subtle. It's, it's you awakening to it all of a sudden realizing this 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 ought not to be this way. Why is, oh, I'll give you an example. It's like we were sharing earlier talking in when my children were small and I was preparing a Bible study and I needed to concentrate and I didn't have an office. I was, was working out of my house and my babies would be kind of arguing or getting upset and it would always seem to take place just before I was to go out and, pre and give a Bible study or while I was in preparation of a study. And I was mentioning that what I would do is I would, I would put down the pen because they used to use just pen and paper and I would pray and I would say, Father, if this is something that is needing me to go and correct, I, I will. But if this is something that is spiritual, there's a provocation to disturb my peace and my attention to my preparation. Father, I pray that you would settle this down, that you'd bring calmness. John, that happened so many times, and I, before the Lord, it became my habit because the enemy, I know, was working through my children to take away my peace, take away my attention from his word, and then to cause me to be provoked to an anger towards my babies. I mean, there were some very real things going on, and I, I began to learn that a long time ago. The first thing that I need to do is pray. And, and Lord, if this is something that is, is provoking me in the wrong direction, I ask in Jesus' name that you would awaken me to it. And that's what the Lord did many times. That's what happened, and, and to this day it continues that way, John. And it's the, you said last night, it's the prayers. There's some stuff going on there in the back. Uh, it's the prayers that really would help you, or at least answer when we're going through a spiritual warfare, right? Yeah. It just, Lord, help me with that. And, yeah. uh, and so and last night was very practical, Pastor. Even the, the scriptures that were shared in Ezekiel, how Satan, how he was before, and how he was now cast out. Yeah, in. yeah. And, uh, but you know, at the end, and I want to wrap it up with this, Pastor, what really tied everything together was before, right, right before communion, I, I really, personally, I really love that time because you share your heart. And you're, you're sharing how much you love your family, obviously, but how much you love our church. And, and I think people sometimes may not understand how much you truly love our church. And because I work here and I work close, our office are very close in proximity, I see the love that you have for our church. And it was amazing for you to share that last night with our congregation. Now. Well, they need to know that. And, you and, know. and, you know, and if you're watching, I, I can say that truly our pastor loves our church. And he's not hand signaling emotionally me right now, like, say this, say this, say this. Right? Mm. <laughs> no, but, but how much you really love. And, and, uh, and it just seemed that everything just tied together with that with uh, the practical aspect of pray during our spiritual warfare. And, uh, and, and to top it off with you expressing how much you love our church. You know that uh, we'll be looking at the, the uh, weapons of our warfare. Um, obviously, we'll be looking at being girded with truth. You know, when the uh, Apostle Paul was uh, describing the uh, weapons, what, you know, this is a man who was uh, guarded by Roman soldiers. He was very familiar with their armor, but he was also aware of the order in which the armor was put on. And he actually enumerates that as we go through it, putting, you know, gird yourself with truth and all of that. Each one of those pieces he speaks about came in a certain order, so we'll be looking at that yeah. as we go through the study. And so, again, invite your friends and family to come join us on Wednesday evenings. Uh, the cool thing about it is just you just started the series on, yeah. on spiritual yeah. warfare. So it's not too late to come check us out on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. And then on Sunday mornings at 8.30 and 10.45, mm -hmm. we have our services as Pastor David's taking us through. You're taking us through Mark 
and we're going to be looking at the the, the wid- widows mites. The widows mites, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, if anybody's ever been to Israel, that's they're mm-hmm. they're very very small. They are. And so, well, Pastor, thank you so much, and you guys, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you again. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Amen. Thank you, Pastor.